Hi, my name is Ed and I'd like to talk you through XMOS's USB audio reference design. So this is a quick introduction. Um, what I've drawn here is a thing called a core diagram and that's the way in which we show how the different cores within our multi-core devices uh, work together to make a certain function. So the USB audio reference design essentially is a USB to I2S bridge. So that's really the, the sort of simple way of thinking about it. And what it does, it transports bit perfect audio from the host over USB audio class either one or two out to an I2S stream in either direction, supporting input output. Um, so that's the software reference design. Um, what I'd like to do is just talk you through each of these blocks and how they work and what they do. So each of these circles represents a logical core within our device. So it's a, essentially a processor running a certain task. Now the two main ones, of course, are the ones at the end. So the one at the left-hand side is XUD, which is XMOS USB device. And that implements the high-speed um, USB device uh, state machine and supports all the, the low-level transaction, uh, transactions which are um, um, provided to or sent out to the, to the physical layer device connected to it. So that's at one end. At the other end, I2S comes directly out on the pin from our I2S um, audio software component at this end. So essentially you've got isochronous streams coming and, and leaving here over I2S and USB packets uh, uh, departing and arriving at this end. So in between, there are two further tasks, and um, they both do a similar job except for different ends. So the buffer um, core here, what it does is it essentially makes sure that the XMOS USB device task is always fed with data and is always responded to when things happen. So whenever transactions happen here, it's always ready to service them and buffer the data and take, take it away from here so that this is always free and not blocked. And the same is true for decouple, so audio is constantly running and it constantly needs to be fed with data to output, uh, which is provided by decouple, and also be ready to drain off data into the buffer um, at the same time. So essentially audio is running doing the I2S in software uh, directly on the pin, uh, but decouple makes sure that data is, is fed and drained off, um, off this, this function here. And really what we have in the middle because essentially these two are running at different rates, is a FIFO. Oh, FIFO, like that. Uh, which just, it's a very short FIFO, but it just handles the different rates uh, between these two sides here and any, any jitter and so forth. So that's the basic reference design. There's one other um, function that Audio does which I didn't mention, which is I squared C. So most um, codecs or ADCs and DACs, as well as having the audio path, have a configuration um, port as well which tends to be I2C and so uh, when things like sample rate changes and so forth happen uh, this is handled by this core here just to make sure that the codec is set up for the corresponding audio stream. So that's the basic reference design, the software re reference design. Um, there are many more features it supports, uh, things like USB audio class 1 or 2 or, or both, um, HID which is human input device so you can actually connect switches and buttons and pots and so forth and send control messages back up to the host. Uh, it can do DFU which is a device firmware upgrade so you can actually upgrade the uh, or um, reflash the, the firmware locally from the um, USB host from the, from the host PC or Mac or so forth. It can do things like MIDI as well so you can actually add a, a MIDI port here um, so you can handle MIDI messages again presented up via the, um, the standard uh, USB classes. Um, lots of other things you can do too like um, digital output um, so SPDIF, uh, inputs or, or outputs, and that would just connect here, take the same audio data and output it directly to a pin uh, using an SPDIF software component here. Um, you can also do other types of digital input output, for example ADAT, which is multi-channel over a single wire. Um, the other thing you can do, which is quite interesting, is as well as just the buffering and, and transport of data, you can actually um, make operations on the data, for example digital signal processing. So it's possible to break the audio chain here and put in an additional task uh, running on a, a logical core which could be DSP. So in this case you can apply filtering before uh, signals reach the output um, I2S pin or 
that could be replaced by a mixer. So we have a, a mixer component which allows you to bring audio inputs, mix them, send them back out, monitor or mix them before going to the host. And putting the mixer here means it's very good for, for monitoring live sound applications because all of the mixing is done locally and you don't have the delay going back up to the host and back again. So it's very powerful and very flexible there. Um, the reference design itself runs on lots of different kits. Uh, we've got a whole host of kits, two channel, four channel, eight channel, uh, DSD compliant, uh, different hosts, for example, Apple hosts or, or um, standard uh, PC. Um, Windows or Mac hosts. Um, so it's a very flexible design. It's essentially the same design, it's just parameterized and, and runs on different kits. Um, to actually change the design is very easy. Normally it's just a, uh, a matter of changing a single line of source code. Uh, for example, a hash define, you know, from two to six channels, for example, and just defining the ports. So the changes are very easy and it's very flexible and it's uh, an extremely powerful reference design. So if you'd like more information about the USB audio reference design, you can go to xmos.com where you can find details on the kits, the software, and where you can sign up to download, to get a license to download the actual software itself. And there's a, a document which I recommend there called the USB audio uh, uh, reference design guide, which tells you about all of these features and more, how to do it, the performance, the capabilities, and all contained within a single document. So I hope that was interesting. Uh, my name's Ed. Thanks for watching.